So we back with another video. Today we got y'all boys with another NFL video. Today we're going to be going over the offenses. Now I already gave y'all the QBs. I gave y'all the predicting every team schedule. I gave y'all ranking every single team based off their rosters. And I also gave you guys the ride receivers. Now if y'all do want the running backs, I was debating it. Should I upload that? Let me know. I can do the running backs. I do plan on doing edge rushers. I do plan on doing DBs. And then I do plan on doing defense. I may just do two a piece and then do the whole thing. But I also may just not do DBs or edge rushes. I think I may just do one or the other and then do like schemes. Because that's what I want to do. I want to get into schemes this year. Because I think people kind of be under uh, appreciating what a scheme can do for a defense or offense. So that's what we're doing. Today we're doing the defenses. Y'all do want more like or no. Today we're doing the offenses. If y'all do want more like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Comment down below who you think will have the best offense in the league. Who you think will have the worst offense. Without further ado, let's hop into it. Let's go! Hopping into it, man. Now, we got Elite. Now, this is going to be the pack of teams that's just going to have some of the best offenses in the league. Above average is team that's going to be above average. Average is pretty much mid or average. I wanted to put mid, but I ain't going to lie. Y'all be kind of tweaking on that. Below average, that just means you're below average. You're not good. Trash means you're going to be one of the worst defenses in the league. Now, let's hop into it. First team is the commanders now the commanders did make a lot of pickups i will say that i honestly want to do the little roster thing but that's gonna make the video too long we're gonna go smooth with it we're gonna do it like this i keep thinking that i'm doing defense this is offenses so actually the commanders actually did pick up Jaden daniels jd now jd was my qb3 in the draft but i was really high on jd before the end of the season Everything that came after that, I actually thought he would go up. For me, he went down. I don't know how that's possible. But with that being said, JD um, is a big addition. But I will say, I don't think Sam Howell was that bad. So I don't really think their offense was an issue besides the offensive line. I think the offensive line was for sure an issue. But I, I wasn't mad at the scheme. It wasn't crazy to me, but it, I wasn't mad at the scheme. Quarterback play was not what you elite, but you know what I'm saying? For as bad as they was. In my opinion, I wasn't mad at it. And then, wide receivers. I thought they had one of the best wide receiver depths in the league, but I just didn't like the wide receiver rotation where they would take McLaurin out the game so much to me. Now, wait until JD runs into a sack. He's out for the season. Now, that's the one concern with JD is injury prone. But, in my opinion, I think, I think the commanders, at minimum, they should have a pretty electric offense next year. Um, the offensive line is my main concern, especially with JD having maybe an injury concern with his frame. So I must say average, but I wouldn't be surprised if the commanders come out there with Cliff Kingsbury being like their offensive coordinator. They have like a spread offense. They're going to really want to play fast. JD get to running the ball. Brian Robinson is a good running back and the offensive line just a lot better than it was last year. So I wouldn't be surprised if the commanders go up here to above average, to be honest. But for now, I'm going to put them in average. Panthers. Panthers is another team that made a lot of additions. And I really am a Bryce Young believer. I really do think Bryce Young, if you really watch the games, he was a very accurate quarterback. He just was kind of let down in terms of scheme, let down in terms of offensive line, let down in terms of wide receiver. And sometimes he was letting himself down as well. He just was a rookie. But I do expect him to have some improvement coming to this next season. Now, one thing I just said, they let him down just like he let himself down. They have done a lot to make up for that. They got a way better scheme with um, Canales, Canales, however you say bro name, that came from the Buccaneers. And then they also got wide receivers. They got Leggett in the draft, who a lot of people was actually really high on. That can be like, like go-to, or not go-to, but number one wide receiver. They picked the Deontay Johnson, Baby Tay, Tay Jr. I'll be forgetting which one he is between Ayuk and him. But just know he's going to get open. Now, will he drop the ball? Yes. Yes, but he looked like he motivated this year to really show a lot of people that he's going to be a lot of better. Now, offensive line is really the big thing, in my opinion, that I really thought they needed to show up because a lot of the guys on wide receivers, believe it or not, were just young. So Mingo, Marshall, if they get time, they could actually improve. But they just had a really young wide receiver course, so I really wasn't holding them to that on that one. I thought that that was going to be, they should improve in the draft, improve in the free agents if they can, but... If they just get one guy, I was not tripping. They ended up getting two, but if they only got one guy, I wasn't tripping too much because they have a lot of youth. Offensive line was the big issue. They needed help on the offensive line, and they need to show up the inside. And they did that in folds. They got a center. They got two guards. And 
They even got some people in the draft. So, hey, the Panthers, in my opinion, did a really good job at making that team a better team. The, the, the thing is, they're going to be, who man. That's a tough one. I think they're going to be much better than they were last year. I think they're going to be average. It just comes down to them and the commanders. I think the Panthers did make a little bit better at auditions. And I do think McLaurin is the better of the two for the wide receivers. But the running back, Brian Robinson, I love Brian Robinson. But Jonathan Brooks, a lot of people are high on Jonathan, Jonathan Brooks. I didn't have him as the number one running back in the draft, me personally. But a lot of people said if it wasn't for the torn ACL, he would have went first round. And they didn't get him in the second round. So, hey, all I'm going to say is they got better at pretty much every position besides quarterback. This is a make or break year for uh, Bryce Young. I'm a real big believer in Bryce Young. Um... I think he has a little bit more help in terms of offensive line. Maybe not wide receivers. Wide receivers are debatable. Um, they still have Adam, Thiel Adam Thielen, who was good last year. <sighs> but I'm going to put the Panthers. I'm going to actually put them above. I don't want to go leap for all of them and put them in above average. I don't know if I can really say they're going to be above average. I don't know if they're going to be explosive enough. Because, like, Deontay Justin Johnson is not a beat you over the top type guy. Leggett can be the deep ball guy, but I feel like... Deontay Johnson and Thielen kind of operate in the same area based off how Thielen played last year. So I don't know how that's going to work. I'm interested to see. Apparently, Deontay is practicing to be an outside receiver all year. So I'm interested with that. But, yeah, um, the Patriots. Man, the Patriots are going to be pretty bad. Now, this is what I'll say. The Patriots, quarterback-wise, is very interesting. If the quarterback situation is anything but Drake May, is trash. Not debatable. Not debatable. But if Drake May is the quarterback, I ain't going to lie. Pop Douglas, I think, is going to be pretty good this year. I'm not going to lie. Ramondre Stevenson is going to be good. Now, we did lose Zeke, but we did replace Zeke with Antonio Gibson. I do think that is a downgrade, though, based on how good Zeke played for us last year, depending on our offensive line. Our offensive line is going to be better because of health. That's one thing. And we did pick up some guys. Now, I don't like the guys we ended up picking up. But just us being healthy, our offensive line is going to be better. Our offensive line was horrible last year, though. But, yeah, we're going to be trash. If Drake May plays, we could be above average. But we'll probably be more so trash because our wide receivers are still going to be kind of bad. Our wide receivers is going to be kind of more so regardless of how good the young guys end up being. It's going to be kind of more so like the Panthers was last year. I'm going to be honest with Bryce Young. No matter who's the quarterback. That's kind of why I really hope Drake May kind of sit a year. You know what I'm saying? Learn the offense as much as you can. It really don't make too much sense to throw him out there, and there's not really much to do it for, except for the fact that our defense is going to be so good. Now, the Cardinals. The Cardinals is a very interesting one. Kyler Murray, healthy this year. Last year, he started the year um, unhealthy because of the torn ACL. He ended up coming through the year at the end, and he looked pretty good. James Conner, I like the offensive scheme that they had last year. They was very competitive. Um, when it came to Marvin Harrison, a lot of people look at him as a generational prospect wide receiver. Um, now, they did lose some wide receivers in terms of Rondell Moore and what's bro name? Mar Marquise Brown. But they actually had a pretty resurgent, a pretty good resurgent, um, not resurgent, but emerging wide receiver last year. Forgot his name. But Trey McBride also, in my opinion, was the guy that I thought was their best receiving threat before. No, no matter who they – well, before they picked Marvin Harrison, I thought that Trey McBride was going to be their best weapon regardless until they picked in the draft, if they picked the right receiver. Now, obviously, Marvin's going to be the option number one, but him and Trey McBride is going to be a good little punch combination for Cardinals. Their offensive line is getting better. It's been bad the whole time Kyler's been there, but it's getting better, in my opinion. I'm going to put them boys at average to above average. But I'm going to put them at average. I'm going to put them at average. I think that this is going to be a team that can score on anybody, but I don't know if I can put them in above average. Buccaneers, now, this is an interesting one. Now, I think Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, they actually have another good wide receiver, and their own line is the issue for this team, especially with Ryan Jensen retiring. It was much better last year than it was the year before when Brady had played. But I do think Canales, losing Canales is a big loss. I do think Baker is not going to be able to be as good as he was last year. And 
Rashad Wright, believe it or not, had a really good year. Now I don't know how I don't know how Rashad Wright gonna look. I'm gonna be honest. Rashad Wright could be just as good as he was last year. So that's a tough one. That's a tough one. That's a really tough one. The Buccaneers have really good wide receivers, one of the best wide receiving corps in the league. And they got Rashad White, their offensive line. I'm more so leaning average, personally. I'm personally leaning average. But I don't know if Baker is enough for me to lean out of the way of the Panthers and the Commanders. Me personally. I'm low-key leaning putting the Cardinals up here. So the more I think about it, the group, the we- the position weapons they have, they have a pretty good core, in my opinion, of three guys when you think of, like you said, James Conner, Connor, James Conner, Marv, and Trey. Kyler is one of the better quarterbacks in the league already. There's nothing really to think about there except for health. So I, I'm going to put him above average. The Raiders, they did pick up Gardner Minshew. So that's the thing. They got Brock Bowers in the draft. Myers was pretty good last year. We all know who they wide receiver is, though, who number one option is, though. Um, I actually like Meyer. I forgot bro name, but Meyer, the other tight end they had, I actually like him. And apparently they're thinking of using – Brock Bowers at the slot or in the slot. So that's interesting. I'm going to be honest. The Raiders could be an above average offense. Kind of more similar to what the Colts was, but just a lot better skill weapons in terms of outside, like in terms of wide receivers and tight ends. But their running back is just not nowhere near as good as JT. And their quarterback is just not as like, well, I guess for the most part, the Colts had the quarterback that the Raiders had. But I'm saying when, AR-15 was playing. That was a pretty dynamic offense, in my opinion. So, the Raiders, I want to say above average. But they probably going to be more so, uh, they're going to probably be more so down here. I'm going to be honest. They're probably going to be more so down here. They're going to be more so probably average. Where they where they got highs, but they got lows. That's what I think. I think their defense is going to be more so what's good on their team. I think they're going to be more so good highs, but some lows. So, I'm going to say that that's going to be just an inconsistent team that's just going to come out to just being average, personally. Um, I'm going to actually put them right here. Dang, putting them below the Panthers is kind of crazy. But I do believe in the Panthers this year. The Broncos, Bo Nix, they lost Jerry Judy. I'm not going to lie, the Broncos, I don't, I don't see it with the Broncos this year. I, lo- I like Cortland Sutton. I don't know. They may be trash. I like Devonta Williams. I like Cortland Sutton, but it depends on how much you believe in Bro Nix. I like Bo Nix more than most, but I don't really think – I think this is going to be a team that's really more so really relying on their defense. If Bo Nix can be really good, I can see them being an average to below average offense, but right now I'm putting them in trash. Saints, Derek Carr, Alvin Kamara, Chris Olave. I believe they got Rashid Shaheed back. Some of these teams picked up players, and I'm just not. Oh, the Broncos actually got um, Troy Franklin. I like that pickup. I'm going to put them below average, actually. Bro, If uh, I'm not going to lie. Bo Nix is actually solid. They could go up to above average. Because I like their all-line. I like Javante Williams. I like Cortland Sutton. I like Troy Franklin. They could go up to above average because I actually like Marvin Mims too. Or Mims. I'm going to just say Mims. I don't know if that's his first name or not. Um, but, yeah. I'm trying to make sure I can think of all these people who they picked in the draft. Saints. I don't believe they picked up nobody else wide receiver-wise or tight end. But their offensive line is going to be really interesting because I'm pre- pretty sure Ryan Ramchick is not playing this year. I don't know if that's 100% true or not yet. That's crazy. If he's not playing, Derek Carr did not look great to me last year. I'm going to put them in below average. Man, but they got Alvin Kamara, Chris Olave. That's a tough one. The Saints is a very tough one. But I don't think they got enough outside those two players. I'm trying to think, bro. I may got to actually pull up some of these teams, bro, because I'm not going to lie. I cannot remember who did they pick up. I feel like every one of these teams picked up somebody pretty crucial because that was a pretty good draft. Okay, yeah, I was not tripping. It's literally just Chris Olave and Alvin Kamara. Jamal Williams is coming back, but he wasn't that crazy to me last year. 
Rashid Shaheed. I actually like Rashid Shaheed. I'm not really messing with anything else, wide right receiver wise. Tight end wise, they got Taysom Hill, but not really messing with it. They did pick up Talise Fuaga, actually. I did like that pick. Talise Fuaga was actually my second best tackle in the draft. So I did love that pick for them. That was actually a really good pick. It has Ryan Ramchek on here. So if he's coming back, I ain't going to lie. Good O line. They got a, a real wide receiver one, a really good uh, wide receiver two or three. Really, I think Shahid is more of a three. And Alvin Kamara, one of the better running backs in the league, still, in my opinion. So I would say, I would say, I'm going to be honest. With them, with them having them two tackles, that makes a pretty big difference for me. So, I'm going to actually go ahead and say they're going to be right, right here. Because they got the tackles situated. They got two, a, a, a pretty young guard, a pretty young center. I think they're going to be pretty – I think they're going to be improving O-line just in general, just off of getting another tackle after losing Armstead last year. So, yeah, I think I'm pretty faithful for this team. And just off they, they, just off seeing that Ryan Ramchek expected to be there, and they picked up the least Fuaga. I forgot they picked him. I knew it was somebody they picked. Now, the Giants. When it comes to the Giants, man, they lost Saquon Barkley. Now, I done said this multiple times if you've been peeping these videos, but I don't know what's going on with the Giants. But whenever they get somebody, it really, or whenever they get somebody new, it really feel like they lose their most important player on offense. They went from Odell to Saquon to now Malik Neighbors. Now, I do think the passing game is going to be elevated, and the running game is not going to drop off as much as people are thinking about because they did pick up Devin Singletary. But I'm going to be honest. Saquon, Devin Singletary, I feel like the low Saquon had to do is not going to be as big of a deal for Devin Singletary because they now have a real wide receiver one. So I don't know. And especially if one Dale Robinson can be healthy, that's going to be pretty big. Jalen Hyatt is pretty, has some pretty good potential. Darius Slayton shows some pretty good glimpses the past couple years. Theo Johnson, they picked him in the draft, and they have Daniel Bellinger, who I actually didn't understand why they picked up Darren Waller last year when he had Bellinger, who was pretty good as a rookie. So I don't really understand, um, but off as a line, that's still a pretty big issue. They did pick up John Runyon, but that's still a pretty big issue, in my opinion. So what I say is, based off that, I'm going to have to put them boys in a below average, and I'm putting them at the high below average. It's all based off Daniel Jones, but I'm going to put them boys in below average. I do still think Malik Neighbors going to have a pretty good year. Um, The Jaguars. And the reason why I have the Gi Giants over the Broncos is because Brian Daybo's scheme, I trust what he's going to do with Neighbors and what everything else is going to revolve around how Neighbors is going to play. Like, everybody else is going to pick up where he late. It's going to make sense. It's going to make sense. So, Brian Abel scheme is going to be really good to make uh, neighbors shine. But as a whole, everybody else is going to be playing a lot better because based off time, teams are going to start keying in on neighbors. As teams key in on neighbors, it's going to make everything else easier. It's going to be much easier to run the ball. It's going to be much easier to get the other guys the ball as well. So, that's what I'm pretty much saying with him. When it came, when it comes to the uh, Broncos, I really do think Sean Payton has a, a system, but I don't know if his system is outdated or it fits the modern game as well as he thinks it does. And I don't know for a fact if Bo Nix is the guy. Now, with Daniel Jones, is he the guy with the Giants? In my opinion, no. But at the same time, I think he can he can do enough. The, the Jaguars, mm, that's a tough one. Jaguars, they picked up Brian, Th Brian Thomas, I believe. Yeah, Brian Thomas. That's a big pickup in my opinion. That's going to be really more so what Trevor Lawrence wants. Evan Ingram. They got, um, bro, bro, name, bro, what's up with the name slipping my mind, bro? Ah, oh, man. Who is that in the slot, bro? He one of the best slot players. Forget it. You know what I'm saying. Um, I love Brian Thomas on the outside for them. I think Trevor Lawrence is going to be a lot better than he was to end the year last year. I thought he was actually pretty good. It was just a lot of missed touch, like drop touchdowns. I feel like when it mattered most in terms of like to finish the job, they just couldn't finish a lot of jobs. I think a lot of jobs is going to get finished this year. I expect Brian Thomas to be one of the better like rookies in the league this year, just in general. I feel like fit, he got one of the best fits in the league. I like neighbors fit a lot with Brian Dable, but his quarterback is just not it. 
I like Trevor Lawrence as a quarterback, and I like the scheme that Brian Thomas is coming into. I think that's a really good combination. I think Travis Etienne, one of the um, more overrated running backs, but I think he's going to be – he's a really good get-the-job-done running back in terms of TDs. That's where, it, like, the passing game, they really weren't good at getting TDs. Travis Etienne, really good at getting TDs. That just is what it is. But he's pretty he's pretty versatile. He's a good runner. He's a good wide receiver. Or not wide receiver, but receiving back, I guess you could say. But at the same time, you don't really want him to be your every down back, which is why they actually end up getting Tank last year. But they gonna, I think they're going to use Tank a lot more this year, and that's going to make them be a little bit more well-rounded of an offense. So I'm going to actually for sure put the Jaguars in above average. And I'm going to bring these guys down because I don't think they're on the same tier as the Jaguars. The only issue I got with the Jaguars is that O-line. I need to, that O-line, in my opinion, that's the issue with me right now, that O-line. The Cowboys, the Cowboys is a very interesting team. Their running back situation was interesting, but they ended up picking Zeke. Zeke looked really good last year. So I think their running game is going to be straight. Now, offensive line is a concern. Now, I will say this. It would be a bigger concern if the person they lost didn't miss every single game pretty much. He missed games every year for the past couple years. It just is what it is. So Tyron Smith, he lost one of the best tackles in the league, but he didn't really play a lot of games. But when he played, he was a pretty big deal. Now, they did actually have an emergence in a rookie last year who was going to be in the second year this year. So their own line could be straight, but I'm just saying. Now, they didn't really pick up a lot of things. They pretty much got the same team that they had last year. C.D. Lamb is going to have a great year. Dak Prescott, I'm going to be honest. I'm not really a big Dak Prescott guy, but statistically, he had one of the better years in the league. Simple. It's not really debatable. Now, um, outside of those two guys, what's going to be the consistent factors? That's the real thing. Is Zeke going to be great? I think Zeke's going to be a lot better than where he left off when he was with the Cowboys. I, I ain't going to lie. I do. But I like Dowdle. I like um the little short guy they got as well. Um, I'm going to put the Cowboys in above average. I don't have them being over the Jaguars, but I'm going to put the Cowboys in above average. The Browns. The Browns, I expect to be a lot better than they were last year. I'm not a big Deshaun Watson guy, but they did. You got to understand, one of the best running backs in the entire league, Nick Chubb, was out the entire season last year. He he played like three or four games last year, even if even that. So, yeah, I'm going to say they passing the attack isn't going to be great. I expect it to be better than it was last year because they did pick up Judy. So now they have a real... Like, wide receiver room, in my opinion, where it was a little inconsistent last year. But I think they have a real wide receiver room. I like their scheme, but I don't know if I really... I've said this in the wide receiver video. I don't know if I really like the way they use Amari Cooper. If they can get down on using Amari Cooper a little bit better, I don't know. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to say... I'm going to put them... I'm going to put them here for now. But I really think they could be above average for sure. Honestly, Falcons, this is a team that's going to be a lot better. Off of strictly getting Kirk Cousins. Brian Robinson going to be a lot better. Drake London going to be a lot better. Kyle Pitts going to be a lot better. And that offensive line was already good. That was like the best unit of the whole team in terms of consistency. So they have a good O-line. They have one of the best running backs in the league. They have one of the best young wide receivers in the league. And they have one of the best young tight ends in the league. They can only go up. So, yeah, I think I think the uh, Falcons, this is a team that for sure knocking on the door of elite to me. Knocking on the door. I got them right there at the top of above average. Now, all this is going to be depending on Kirk Cousins' health, but I do think he's going to be back for the season. Buffalo Bills. Buffalo Bills is a team that got worse. Now, they did pick up Curly Samuel. I do like the scheme they're going to have for a full year. Going into last year, I had question marks about the scheme ever since Brian Dable. I like Joe Brady. I like his scheme a lot more than the other guy they had. Now, they did lose Stephon Diggs. That's a pretty big deal. They did lose um, Gabriel Davis. That's a pretty big deal. He actually went to the Jaguars. That's another pretty big deal for the Jaguars. They got two deep threats in the one offseason. So that's a pretty good thing for them. Beyond. They did lose Calvin Ridley, but they did pick up two guys to pretty much replace him that would fit that role a little bit better than what Calvin Ridley was doing. Because I don't think Calvin Ridley is that type of receiver. He's more of a versatile guy that can do that, but when he's only doing that, he's going to be inconsistent. That's just what it is. So, yeah, I think that they fit. They got guys to fit their offense a little bit better than having... They may not be the wide receiver that Calvin Ridley is day one, but they fit that role a little bit better, if that makes sense. Um, 
But yeah. They did get Keon Coleman in the draft. I was a big Keon Coleman guy depending on where he went. If he went to the wrong place, he was a bust ridden all over him. But if he goes to the right team, he could be amazing. And he ended up going to one of the teams I was saying. If he went to the Chiefs, that was amazing. If he went to the Bills with Josh Allen, that was a great fit. He ended up going with the Bills. I think him being with Josh Allen is a great fit. Regardless of the scheme, the, the, the types of plays, the type of throws that Josh Allen likes to make, he wants a 50-50 guy. Keon Coleman was one of the best 50-50 guys in the draft just in general. Like, I think Rome was the best 50-50 guy, but Keon Coleman may be top, he definitely top five in the draft in terms of 50-50. He may even be higher than five. So, I think Keon Coleman is great. I think he's a lot faster than what people think, especially when you look at him off the ball in terms of, not off the ball, when he has the ball in his hands, when you get to seeing him move. Like, if you just look at his clips of him with punt returning, he looks really good moving with the ball for his size. So, I like him. They also still have the guys that they had outside of those two who was actually playing a lot better after the scheme changed when they started to be more of a, like, group work, more so than targeting just one guy. So that was interesting, but I think they're going to run the ball a lot more. So I expect James Cook to be a lot better. I expect that offensive line to be a lot better than what people really looked them as. So I'm going to actually say... I'm going to actually say the Bills are here. I don't expect them to be the elite, though, this year. I, I Josh Allen's my second-best quarterback in the league, so that's kind of what's pushing this high. Zach, Josh Allen, James Cook, that offensive line. Outside of those three things, wide receivers is a big issue, a big question mark for me this year. I like Curtis Samuel, but I don't love him. You know what I'm saying? I like him, but I don't love him. Keon Coleman, I think the fit is good, but is it going to be good off the rip? I don't know. I don't know if that's going to be a great fit off the rip. That's interesting. So, yeah, the Miami Dolphins, that's an elite offense. The only issue they have is running, not running the game. Don't get that twisted. The thing is, their issue is is really kind of wild because they're so good at passing the ball. They're so good at running the ball. Their issue is offensive line and health, really, but it's really offensive line. But they're so they're still so good at throwing the ball and running the ball that I don't even understand how they're even that good. Now, they have, in my opinion, the best scheme in the league. In my opinion. I think that Mike McDaniel offense is the best scheme in the league. Everybody was copying that Tyreek Hill motion, whatever they call it. Like, motion when just call while he motioning like that. I don't know how you guard that, to be honest. Letting them get full speed behind the line and snapping it when I'm already running full speed. There's no start stop. He's already going. That's incredibly ridiculous. But, yeah, the Dolphins, in my opinion, Waddle, I expect they to have a better year than he had last year. A-10, being more healthy, should be a big deal. And they did lose guys off his line, but they also, they also gained some people. So, I don't know how big of an issue the line going to be. So, that's just what I'll say. I'm going to lead them in the lead. The Packers. Now, the Packers is a very interesting. Now, I went over this for the wide right receivers. That is a very interesting situation they got going over there. They got four guys, in my opinion, that could be the best wide right receiver on any given day for that team. So depending on the matchup, they got guys that can beat what your faults are <laughs> in any given game. So, yeah, that's a very interesting team. I love their scheme. I always loved it. I don't. Under, I never understood the A-Rod's hate for the scheme. Like, what, what was, like, the friction with the scheme here? Like, I understood the Mike McCarthy a little bit. But here, I didn't really understand it for um for LaFleur. But, yeah. Running back is the thing with me. Aaron Jones did have his injury concerns. So, I can honestly see how that could be a positive coming into this year. Because ja- Jacobs, he's one thing. If he's anything, he's going to play. He's not going to be injured too much. He's going to play games. Now, he did miss some games last year. But for the most part of his career, he plays. So, yeah, I'm going to say the Packers, I got them being elite. I expect the offensive line to be good. I expect their running game to be good. I expect their passing game to be fantastic. I don't know who to put over who. I don't think they scheme is better than the Dolphins. I don't think they wide receiver is better than the Dolphins. I actually like the Dolphins picks of pickups in the draft, too. I do think their quarterback is better. The running back game is not better. Their offensive line and quarterback is better. And I do think the gaps on those two are pretty big. But 
the quarterback gap may not be as big as I think, but the offensive line gap I do think is pretty big. So yeah. Now they did lose Batiari as well, but he's kind of like the Cowboys. He didn't really play a lot, so that's kind of that type of deal. Now Bears, Bears is a team that's definitely gonna be the most improved offense. I'm not gonna lie. Now they was putting up points. I was going over this with my my guy that used to be on these t- videos, TJB. Y'all was putting up points a lot, but that was more so because of how good y'all defense was playing in the year. I think this year it's not going to be as big of a deal based off the defense. Now, if the defense is still doing that, that's going to be even better. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you right now, that's that's even better. But their offense has a dynamic where you have a guy that can be this versatile guy that can do all. You have this route-running technician that has great hands, guy in Keenan Allen. And you have Roma Dunze, who can be this great 50-50 guy, in my opinion, that can be really that good deep threat wide receiver. So I really do like Rome being that deep threat guy. I really do like Keenan being that that short intermediate guy. And I like DJ Moore just fitting in wherever he can. Like he can just do everything. Like he can be the slot. He can play on the outside. He can do the screen game. He can play the deep guy. He can be the intermediate. He can do anything. That's why in that video, that wide receiver video, it was very tough to rank him because I don't know where he even falls in play with any of this because I see I see Caleb with Rome, I see Caleb with Keenan, but where does DJ Moore fit in this? I don't, I still don't know, but I do expect their um, offensive line to be better than it was last year. But the thing I have an issue with Caleb is the same thing I have with J- Justin Fields holding the ball too long. That's my issue. Now the progression reading field that was an issue with with Fields. I don't know how big of an issue that is with Caleb because he could just be more like Patrick Mahomes. I never thought Patrick Mahomes had an issue with reading the field. It's just that he kind of wanted the bigger play early on in his career. In the past two years, he kind of went away from that, and he's gotten a lot better with that. I think that's more so because he did lose Tyree Hill than anything, though. He Caleb's coming into the league with one of the best wide receiver corps in the league. Now, I do think the issue with this offensive team, offense, is their O-line. I thought their running back situation was ridiculous already. They had a top five running game in the league. I think it was actually second in rushing yards total or something like that last year. But I don't know. Um, I do think their running game is going to be fantastic again this year. I don't know. I think they lost Foreman, though. They did get Swift, but I like Foreman more than Swift. That's just me. I don't understand why he wasn't playing. But I do like Herbert. I do like, uh, no, Johnson is cool. Um, Swift is cool, but I'm, I think their offense, I think their running game is going to be good regardless. I think their offensive line is more of a running offensive line, but that'll be interesting how that works out in terms of Caleb. But I do have the Bears being an above average offense. I do. This looks crazy. I'm looking at this, to be honest. This looks crazy. Falcons, but the Bills lost their wide receivers. Like, Bears' wide receivers is not really debatable. It's better. Bills' offensive line is better than Bears. Running backs is tough. James Cook, I would take over all the Bears, but as a whole, I don't know if I'm doing that. I don't know if I'm doing that. I like the unit over there of running backs. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's tough. That's pretty tough. I'm, I'm going to put Bears at the top of above average, though. I don't know if they're going to quite be elite. I'm not trying to put that pressure on Caleb. I'm not really the biggest Caleb guy, but the like the flashes that he has is for sure elite. Like the flashes, so like if he really is as good as people say, they're gonna be an elite offense off the rip. That just is what it is. But I'm gonna just be I'm gonna just be smart about this and not go too crazy. The Minnesota Vikings. The Minnesota Vikings is a team that is tough. I seen a report about J.J. McCarthy is like threatening to hold out, and he hasn't played a single game. I don't know what's going on. If I'm J.J. McCarthy, I got Aaron Jones in the backfield. I got Jordan Addison. I got Justin Jefferson. And I got T.J. Hawkinson. And I got one of the best coaches for a quarterback in the league. Bro, what? Like, bro, I'm not going to lie. I don't know what's going on. But get your money, I guess. But threatening to hold out as a rookie, and you ain't played a single game, is so is crazy to me. I don't know what's going on with that. But this team is a impossible team to rank and this is why i was saying with the buccaneers this is what i was saying with pretty much all these teams in average is the quarterback the only team that's really i'm not saying that for is the cardinals i'm gonna put the cardinals up 
I'm gonna put the Cardinals up because average is pretty much just dedicated off the quarterbacks. Honestly, I feel like everything else outside of them is looking up personally, but they're, they should be over them. They should be over them. Um, they should be over them. I'm not gonna lie. Um, the Vikings, I like their offensive line. I like their running game. I like their passing game. How good is the quarterback going to be? They got Sam Darnold or J.J. McCarthy. That is a toss-up, man. I don't know. I like J.J. McCarthy coming to the draft. I didn't have him at three like some of the guys, but I had him I had him behind Bo Nix. I, I had him, Bo Nix, and Michael Penix. I had both of them behind Michael Penix, but I had Bo Nix above J.J. McCarthy personally. But I actually thought Michael Penix, Bo Nix, and J.J. McCarthy was all in the same tier. And I thought uh, J.D. was there in that tier, but he was a, a notch above those guys, in my opinion. So, yeah, I don't know. J.D. McCarthy is an interesting one to me because he has flashes of, of arm talent, but he don't really seem like he may be a consistent quarterback because he never was really asked to do it. So I don't know how consistent he's going to be in the, in, at doing it, and he's going to have to do it in the NFL. So I don't know, but he's going to a friend, QB friendly, as QB friendly of a team as you can go to. Like him and Caleb going to as good of a QB friendly team as you can possibly go to. Like this man tackles for J.J. McCarthy. Like his tackles are set in stone. Rod receiver set in stone. Tight end set in stone. Like he going to have these guys for pretty much the next five years, guaranteed. So I don't know what's going on, what to expect out of this team. To be safe. This bro, I don't I need y'all to go watch the film last year and look at how good the Vikings offense was in spurts when it came to Kirk Cousins, no Justin Jefferson. When it came to Justin Jefferson, um I think that was Nick Mullins. When they took Nick Mullins out, it would look bad. I ain't gonna lie. But that first time Jerry Hall was out there, that first drive, that looked pretty straight. Josh Dobbs was pretty inconsistent. That first game it looked pretty straight. So I don't know. I don't know. If it's Sam Darnold, I'm going to go here. If it's J.J. McCarthy, I'm going to put them boys here, but with the upside to go higher. With the upside to go higher. Colts, I'm expecting a lot of things out of AR-15. They picked up A.D. Mitchell. They picked. They got Michael Pittman back. They got Josh Downs back. J.T. should be there for the whole year. They got him paid. Hey, their offensive line is solid. Man, Colts. Hey, the sky is the limit for the Colts. The Colts could be an all. They, hey, listen to me. The Colts got one of the best offensive schemes in the league. In the league. They could be an elite offense this year. They could be an elite offense. It's just, I don't know, bro. Is AR-15 going to be healthy? Until I see AR-15 be healthy, I'm putting AR-15 right here. I'm putting him right there. He's going to be above average. Until I see him healthy, I'm putting him there. But if he's healthy, it's elite for me. I'm putting them elite. I'm but I'm stamping that. They're going to be elite. The Bengals. This is another team that's interesting. Their offensive line is getting a lot better, though. Let me say that. Their offensive line is getting a lot better over the past two years for sure. Um, but the wide receivers, is T. Higgins going to get traded? I don't know. I like the running back. We were just talking about that. But Zach Moss going to that team, I don't think that's a really a loss. You could really argue it's a, it's a bonus because Zach Moss, when he was playing with the Colts last year, he would look phenomenal, in my opinion. So that's going to be good. Ride receiving corpse. I actually think them losing Tyler Boyd is not that big of a deal because I like the young guy they had last year. And I think they actually picked up somebody else in the draft this year. Tight end? I don't remember. I don't know what they got going on at tight end. I ain't going to lie. But, yeah. The Bengals, they have top three quarterback in the league, in my opinion. They have one of the be- one of the elite wide receivers in the league. If T. Higgins is back, he's an above average wide receiver. Um, Zach Moss is an above average running back. I think the Bengals are going to be pretty... What the hell? I think the Bengals going to be an elite offense. Healthy. We talking about healthy Joe Burrow. We talking about healthy Joe Burrow. I think that's going to be an elite offense. In my opinion, it has to be because I think their defense is going to be worse than it was last year. If Joe Burrow is not healthy or he's looking like he was when he was unhealthy last year, GG's. Just all I can say for y'all, GG's. Um, the Seahawks. Oh, I got A. Now, this is, this is going to be a banger bust opinion above average minimum now that going getting a washington coach or offensive coordinator from last year putting him in y'all team 
with one of the with baby Belichick. Hey, all I'ma say is, them practices gonna be crazy. They gonna see in practice if that's gonna work in the NFL. That's all I'ma say. They gonna see in practice. They gonna see in practice if that Washington offense from college is gonna work in the NFL. They gonna see that in practice. They going against one of the best defensive schemes in the league. So. That's going I, 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 them practices gotta look crazy. I ain't gonna lie. I may gotta tune in and see what they looking like. But, um, I like Kenneth Walker, one of the better young running backs in the league, one of the better uh, wide receiver corps in the league with JSN, Tyler Lockett, and DK Metcalf. I'm really interested to see how those guys are gonna fit in that Washington offense. I think they're gonna be pretty seamless fits, in my opinion. Though I really do think they're gonna be pretty seamless fits. Like I think, um, JSN is gonna be in that McMillan role where he's gonna be in the slot. I think DK is going to be in that Roma Dunze role where he's going to be kind of like the number one wide receiver and the deep threat. And Tyler Lockett is going to be more so in that poke role where he's going to be doing deep balls and he's going to be doing underneath. He's going to be doing intermediate. He's going to be doing a little bit of all the same where he's getting the ball early and he's going for deep shots and stuff like that. So I'm really interested to see how they that work. Tight ends, I actually like them too on that team. Um, off the line is the real thing with me, but I think it has improved the past couple of years since they got rid of uh, Russell Wilson. So... I'm going to put them boys. I can't put them above the Cardinals. I can't put them above the Cardinals because I'm not a big Geno guy. And it is a little bit too much guessing going on with that offensive scheme. With that being said, though, that is what it is. The real, Another thing that's holding the Bears back from being elite is the scheme. Let me say that. If it wasn't for the scheme, me having question marks with the scheme, they would probably be elite. If they had a good scheme, they'd probably be elite. But that scheme that came from the Seahawks, I don't know how much that's going to fit on the Bears, in my opinion. Because that's a two tight end offense. They do have two tight ends, but that means one of their crazy wide receivers is going to be off the field. And I think all three wide receivers are better than either tight end. So that's what's really throwing me off a little bit with the Bears, too, not just Caleb. But yeah, Rams, come on. Sean McVay offense, Matthew Stafford, Cooper Cup, Puka Nakua, Kyron Williams, and their offensive line is getting better. That is the epitome of an elite offense. Elite offense. Now, is their offense better than the uh, Dolphins? That's a tough one. That's a real tough one. That's a real tough one, man. That's like two completely offenses where you got... The uh, the Dolphins that really want to target the, the intermediate and middle of the field and deep. And then you got the Rams who want to target the intermediate middle of the field, but they want to go underneath too. So, I uh, that's a really tough one. But they both want to run the ball too. That's the crazy part. So, that's interesting. That's very interesting. That's a convo. That's a real good convo right there to be had. Um, I do like Matthew Stafford more than Tua. I like Tyreek more than any wide receiver that they have over there. But you could really argue Rams got two elite wide receivers. And they running back is better. I, I think Kyron better than really either of the two that the uh, Dolphins have. Offensive line is better too. The offensive line, in my opinion, Rams is real the real big question mark for the Rams as well. But I believe in their offensive line a, little, a lot more than I do the, the Dolphins. So, yeah. That's... Hey, the scheme ain't that OP. I got the Rams over the Dolphins then. I got the Rams over the Dolphins. They got better quarterback. Arguably better wide receivers. Yeah, I'm going to go there. Oh, no, no, no. I don't know if they got better wide receivers. Because I forgot. The Dolphins actually had two really good pickups in the draft. That's a pretty big deal. Okay. I'm going I'm to I'm stay with the Dolphins on that. Um, Steelers. Russell Wilson. They don't have Matt Canada no more. They did lose Deontay Johnson. They running back, they running game was already fantastic last year. I do think Russ and George Pickens gonna fit. Like George Pickens is not really a middle of the field guy. He's really an outside the numbers type guy. 50-50 ball can get it to him early on a slant though too. You know what I'm saying? So I, I'm interested to see how that dynamic work out. Um, not really high on their offensive line still. I think it was better last year than it was the year before, but. I really do think they did good in the draft offensive line, but they, they their offensive line is young for the most part. So I expect it to be better again, but I don't know if it's going to be crazy good. I think they just get in the trenches to be a much better running game. So their running game is going to probably be elite this year. 
the passing game is the big question mark for me. I'm gonna put the I'm gonna put the Steelers. Ooh man, that's a tough one. That's a real tough one, man. If I'm being honest, I think their running game gonna be the most consistent out of anything in average. Like I think their running game gonna be more consistent than the Buccaneers passing game than the Panthers passing game. That's a tough one. The Raiders pass the game. Yeah, I may be sleeping on the Raiders a little bit. Ain't gonna lie. Yeah, because that, that, bro, they got weapons. Mayer, Myers, Devontae Adams, Brock Bowers. Gardner Minshew is not as bad as people say. I've said that for years now. Ever since he was on the Jaguars, I never understood it. But, hey. Charging that. This is a team that, in my opinion, they lost guys, but they're not gonna be as bad as people think. In my opinion, um, running backs, they're not lacking. They got J.K. Dobbs, Gus Edwards. They got the offensive coordinator that used to be with the Ravens when those two was really at their best with the Ravens. Um, but on the outside, they got Ladd. I really do love Ladd with Justin Herbert. And they also did get Joe Alt to make that offensive line even better. So I'm not going to lie. They did lose Keenan Allen. They did lose Mike Williams. Those two guys was injured last year. They missed multiple games. Justin Herbert's going to be more healthy. Justin Herbert alone, damn near above average offense, in my opinion. But I think that they're going to give him a real running game this year. And his passing game may be a little bit worse, but I think it's going to be above average. I think I think the Chargers are going to be... I think the Chargers and Cowboys are going to be having real similar... Off, like, similar, like, in terms of... How good they are. I think the Bills, the the Cowboys, and the, and the Chargers are going to be real in the same realm. Now, I think the Bills and the Chargers quarterbacks are better than the Cowboys. But I think the passing game for the Cowboys is going to be better than both. But the running game for those other two teams is going to be better than the Cowboys. Now, if the running game for the Cowboys is good, the, running, the Cowboys probably should be elite. That's the big question mark for me. But, yeah. The Titans. <sighs> the Titans got a lot better. In my opinion, they did lose Derrick Henry, but Derrick Henry, if y'all ain't really been peeping, he has not been as good in the his decade, just in general. Um, whether it be injuries, missing games, or just not been as good when he's playing. Now, I think the reason why he's not been as good as he's playing has also had to do with how defense play him. But go look at how people was playing Derrick Henry in 2019, 2020. It's just what it is. Like, people was playing him the way they are now, always. He was playing with Ryan Tannehill, bro, like, I don't know if y'all know who Ryan Tannehill is, but, bro, like, Ryan Tannehill ain't doing nothing for it, bro. So, yeah, I'm not really too crazy on Derrick Henry right now, especially with the injuries. I do think he going to go crazy with the Ravens, though. Don't get that twisted. The Ravens is just OP for him. He don't really even got to do much. Like, he's in a Gus Edwards role. That's ridiculous. I don't know what to tell you. So, that's interesting. But the Titans, I do think that they have a little bit more consistency going over here. Because I think Tony Parler in a split backfield is going to be pretty dynamic. We've seen him as the feature back. It didn't look good. As a feature, as a um, split backfield, he looks phenomenal. So I think him being in a split backfield with Ty J Spears is going to be a lot more up his alley. But in this split backfield, he's going to get more, I think, reps than he did when he was on the Cowboys. So that would be interesting. Um, Rod receivers. I like the pickup of Calvin Ridley. Um, I like the offensive line um, help they got in the offseason. Um, and I really do like the coach. Brian Callahan is apparently an offensive line guru. And them getting the offensive line in the all first round was not surprising at all. I expected Joe Alt, but the Chargers ended up getting him, and they ended up going with Latham. I wasn't high on Latham as other people, but he's like the biggest old lineman in the draft besides Mims. And we'll see. We'll see. Um, but yeah, Titans. I like I'm a Will Levis believer. I think the offensive line is gonna be a lot better than it was last year. The offensive line was not good. Rod receiving core was not good. Um, he now has a good little duo at Rod receiver. Some good young tight ends. Well, one good young tight end. I'm gonna be honest. I think the I think the Titans can be. I think the Titans can be average. I think they can be average. I'm gonna put that. I'm gonna put them. I'm gonna put them right here. I'm gonna put them right here. Um, the Jets. Aaron Rodgers is the big X factor here. 
apparently he's not even at the mini camps. I don't know what's going on, man. Like, come on, bro. You making me look crazy, bro. A Rod, I said y'all was winning 13 games this year. I had you in a I had you in elite quarterbacks this year. I had the, your team in a crazy high tier on the NFL team tier list. I'm finna put you in a pretty high tier here, man. I'll be honest, man. Look at the Jets last year. Their offensive line was the issue. They improved their offensive line drastically this year. They got Tyron Smith and they got Olu on the other side. Bro, their tackles was huge issues. They improved both sides drastically. Brees Hall's one of the best running backs in the league. He just needed a quarterback in the O line. He got both. If Aaron Rodgers plays, Garrett Wilson, one of the best wide receivers in the league. He needed somebody to throw to him. He can do everything, but he can't throw the ball to him. He got Aaron Rodgers. I'm going to be honest. The only issue I got with this offense is the scheme. The scheme. Sim it's very similar to the uh, Bears to me, in my opinion. I do think that the Bears have a better core of wide receivers than the Jets. But that's a tough one. Because I low key do trust the Bears' offensive scheme more than I do the Jets. Because Nathan ha Nathaniel Hackett is not it. Like, that's A-Rod is wilding. If A-Rod really only plays one drive with the Jets and he made them go get Nathaniel Hackett, criminal behavior. Criminal. But I'm going to put them in above average. I want to put them in elite, but I think their defense is more so the elite side anyway. So, yeah. Um, just them being this high of an offensive is going to make them drastically better. Let me, uh, let me get y'all to understand that. That's going to be drastically better. So, yeah. Um, the Eagles... I don't know what more you can ask for. The best offensive line in the league. It's either them or the Lions. Quarterback, one of the better above average quarterbacks in the league, in my opinion. Running back, they got one of the uh, elite running backs in the league. Rod right receiver duos, one of the best rod right receiver duos in the league. I, I'm going to be honest. A lot of people were saying the scheme for the Eagles was bad last year. I am not a believer in that. I just think that they were... Like, a lot of teams just kind of figured them out a little bit better. I think they're going to come this year with a little bit more adjustments, and they're going to be better. They got Saquon as well. So, I think they're they going to – I think they, if they would have leaned on their run a little bit more consistently to end the year, I think they would have been fine because they could run the ball. It's just inconsistently on how they called it. And when they ran it, it was kind of inconsistent. It's not going to be inconsistent this year with Saquon. Now, Saquon, the issue with you, man, your whole career, injuries. Is he going to be healthy? Is he going to be healthy? So – yeah, that's the thing with me. But, yeah, I'm going to have the Eagles here. I don't really see what the faults is here. Like, oh, There's, like, no huge gaping holes. Like, I think the Rams and the Dolphins' offensive lines are, like, real issues. But I expect the Rams' offensive line to be a lot better than it was last year. The Eagles have the best offensive line in the league, one of the best Robert Stephen courts in the league, one of the best running backs in the league, and one of the better quarterbacks in the league. He's a top. Jalen Harris is a top-ten quarterback in the league. So, I don't know, bro. I just don't know. Um, actually, I don't know if he's top 10. He may be, like, top 11. But it's top 10, top 11 around there. Um, the Texans, that's an elite offense. This is an offense that actually is going to be better than the Eagles. To be honest, like, bro. This offense is going to be crazy. One of the best wide receiver courts in the league. One of the best offensive line in the league, again, Another team that has a really good offensive line, man. Really good offensive line. Uh, running back-wise, Joe Mixon, I think he fits their offense perfectly, in my opinion. Where the Bengals really was more of a run team. I think the, 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 the Texans is more of a run team, but I feel like they're more they're going to be more of a pass team with the way they're built this year. So, yeah, I think he fits this offense a lot more now than what the Bengals are moving towards, personally. So, that's interesting. Um, then you got... And, and Joe Mixon is a big step up, in my opinion, from Devin Singletary. So, yeah. Um, the Lions. I mean, I can go more in depth on the, uh, the Texans. Elite quarterback. Elite wide receiver corpse. A very good running back. A very... Is their O-line elite? It's a top-tier offensive line. Uh, elite... That's debatable. I think they have one of the best tackles in the league. Good interior. Another good tackle. I think it damn near is elite. Lions. Again, above average running quarterback. 
one of the best running back corps in the entire NFL. And then they have the best. I think they have the best slot wide receiver in the league. Me personally. Now, Puka don't really play slot like people think. So it's really more so Cup on that team. Puka was the slot before Cup, but Tutu really played slot a little bit more than bro because they were using him like the, in that Tyreek motion. So that's a little interesting to me. But yeah, I think Amara Ra is the best slot, regardless of the fact. <laughs> um, Offensive line, I I think it's arguably the best in the league. I really actually have to. This is another team I have to look at because I I really like, the big issue with me was on the outside. Who do they have on the outside, man? That was the big issue with me for the Lions. Who do they have on the outside? I know they have Jamison Williams, but that's not it. You know what I'm saying? I do like the Donovan D, D, DPJ. I like that pickup. They didn't really pick up nobody. See, that's an issue to me. I like Sam Laporta, obviously. Great tight end. But, yeah, I'm not really messing with... I'm not really messing with that wide receiver corp outside. If Jamison Williams can be a real, true, deep threat wide receiver for them, that's going to do wonders for them. But I do still... Regardless, they're elite. They have one of the best offensive schemes in the league with Ben Johnson. The, the fact that they got him back again was kind of crazy to me. But I would put them... Better O-line. Scheme between them and the Rams is debatable. I would lean the Rams a little bit more in terms of sheer consistency. But the thing that really got the Rams and over a lot of other teams, Rams is a big risk taker. We all know how much risk the Lions take. I feel like their scheme is great, but I think the play designs on the Ram on the Lions is insane. The play designs that they run are insane. That's kind of like the thing that kind of sets the Dolphins apart from everybody, too. The play designs are insane. I'm not a big scheme guy with the Texans. I don't know about their scheme as much as a lot of these other teams, personally. I just think they have so much on that offense that it's really tough to argue them not being this high. The Ravens. Um, Ravens didn't pick up no wide receiver in the draft either, did they? I don't remember on this one. Baltimore Ravens, they picked up. Their wide receiver court is Zay Flowers. Oh, Taz Walker. That was who they picked up. They picked up Taz Walker. They picked up Nelson. I think they they had Nelson Aguilar last year, right? If they didn't, they picked him up. Rashad Bateman, they lost Odell. So now they really don't have a three wide receiver room. But I think they're, they're, they're going to run two tight ends. Isaiah Likely and Mark Andrews are really, really both really, really good tight ends. Mark Andrews being an elite tight end. Um, Isaiah Likely is actually really, really good, though. Uh, Patrick Ricard, one of the better offensive lines in the league. I actually do like the Roger Rosengard pickup. That was a tackle I was sleeping on in the draft. The more I learned about him, the better, the more I like him. So, yeah, I like him. I love Tyler Linderbaum. Come on. Ronnie Stanley. Is he going to be healthy? That's a big question with him, with me. Lamar Jackson, is he going to be healthy? Big question mark with him. Derrick Henry, is he going to be healthy? Big question mark with him. Keith Mitchell, I loved how he was looking as the two-back um, split kind of like change of pace back. I loved him last year when before he was healthy. Is he going to be healthy? Justice Hill is not it in terms of being a focal point running back, in my opinion. But I do like Mark Andrews, Isaiah Likely, Zay Flowers, Rashad Bateman. I do like that core as like a two tight end kind of consistent look especially with the fact that the Ravens love to run the ball so I just think using two tight ends on a regular just makes sense so I like that Taz Walker could be a good upside guy he coming into the like at the end of the college season coming into the like a lot of mouth drafts had Taz as a, a first round prospect now me personally looking at a lot of North Carolina games I didn't see that I like the upside but I don't think he's a day I don't think he was a day one guy I don't think he ever was really a day one guy. But the upside is definitely there. He can be a deep threat wide receiver regardless, day one. But Derrick Henry, they're going to have the best running game in the league. Is either going to, no. The Eagles going to have the best running game. But right behind them, I think that's going to be the Ravens or the Lions. Or the Steelers. The Steelers could have a best running back, running game in the league, too. They, I like, the Steelers' running game is going to be crazy. So. I wouldn't be surprised if C.J. Stroud is a lot worse than he was last year or 
not worse than he was last year, but like the way C.J. Stroud last year was, he was good based off the expectations, in my opinion, because everybody expected the, the Texans to be bad, and he was going out there doing a lot where people didn't really think they had a lot out there. But now looking back on it, Nico Collins is a very good wide right receiver. Tank Dell, as a rookie, was a very good wide right receiver. And they got Stephon Diggs. Now, the expectations are a lot higher this year for um for him and Jordan Love. I think both of them have big expectations where it's very unlikely they meet those expectations. I wouldn't be surprised um, if they don't actually beat, play like elite wide receiver top quarterbacks. But I still have them there. And if they don't play like elite wide receivers, I'm going to have to stick to it. Simple as that. But, yeah, Ravens. Lamar, I'm gonna be honest. I'm not. I'm not worried with you in the regular season. I'm really more so worried about you in the off in the playoffs. So I'm gonna put them boys in elite. I'm gonna put them boys at the back though. Running game is gonna be arguably the best in the league. Passing attack gonna be underrated in my opinion. I'm honestly gonna put them boys here. That's why I'm gonna stop though. Um, the 49ers, Bob Purdy, one of the better. I'm gonna be honest. This Bob Purdy stuff. I don't get it. I don't get it. What's uh, I don't get it. Like, what more did the man got to do? Regular season, very consistent. Um, playoffs, every single time. When they played, just even, bro, when they played the Lions, they were down, like, I don't, they were down at least 21 points going into the second half. Or at least it, late in the second quarter. And what he did to bring them back in that game, what he did in the package to bring them back, now, I think that was more so on Jordan Love than it was on Brock Purdy. So I'm not going to use that game as a reference. But in that Chiefs game, when he played the Chiefs, he didn't. He made some mistakes for sure. Like he should have hit Ayuk on that play. But Chris Jones in your face—that's a tough play to make. And now I don't think anybody looked at Brock Purdy as that escape artist quarterback can, that can throw off his back foot all, and throw a dot under pressure. I in the mean, most mean, nobody looked at Brock Purdy like that. Brock Purdy is just an above average quarterback that's good at making reads and being accurate. That's just what it is, in my opinion. Now. In my opinion, I think the read part is the real thing that I thought he was really good at coming into the um, playoffs. Playoffs, I don't think he's as good of a progressional reader or accurate quarterback as I initially thought. But I don't think he had bad as y'all act like. Regardless of the fact, the issue with this team to me is what's going to happen between Ayuk and Debo Samuel. If they get rid of Debo Samuel... Hot take, I think they offense is going to be actually better than it was last year because I was really high on Ricky Pearsall, and they actually got him. But if they lose Ayuk, this team is going to take a dip. I do think Ricky Pearsall is a guy that can go into play that Ayuk role, but he's not going to be as good as Ayuk in that role. So that's going to be a pretty big issue for that team, in my opinion. But running game is going to be good. They do got CMC on the cover. Is he going to stay healthy? Man curse? I don't know. But knock on wood, whatever you got to do. Um, I don't know, man. This is this is very interesting. 49ers, y'all definitely elite. Let me go ahead and say that off rip. It's where y'all are in elite. Um, the obvious flaw is Brock Purdy. You got to try to, if you were the defense, you got to try to make it hard for him. That's it. Especially with him being young, that's the flaw. If you can make it hard for him, it's going to be tough. But... Another thing that's kind of weird to me is the consistency play calling. It felt like some games in them big games, it really did feel like Kyle Shanahan was trying to prove that Brock Purdy was just the guy. And we all understood that. Like, when they played the Ravens, it really felt like he was taking the ball out the CMC hands way too much, especially when it was a close game. Now, I will say he was a little bit more consistent with that in the playoffs, but even sometimes in the playoffs, he has some pretty interesting play calls in some situations to me. But, yeah, CMC... The best running back in the league, um, one of the better, still one of the best wide receiver corps in the league, and I think it got even better with Pearsall if they do keep all their wide receivers tight end. George Kittle, one of the better tight ends in the league. Offensive line is a real issue to me, but they did. Did they get better on the offensive line? Let me actually look. Let me actually look, man. This is this is one that I'm not a hundred percent sure that they did get better at the offensive line. They should have. That was that was the biggest issue, in my opinion. I know that they had to replace IU, but that was the biggest issue. And, yeah, I'm not really seeing where they got better. Oh, Dominique Puny, I liked him. So, they did get a guard in the draft, but, yeah. They need interior help, so I guess that was a pretty big, 
pretty important. But I actually thought they needed help on the other side of the O line too, and like tackle wise. Like outside of Trent Williams, it really wasn't nothing special to me, in my opinion. So that's an interesting one. Um, where are they in the league? They're above the Packers. They're above the Bengals. They're above the Ravens. That's the thing. Lions don't really depend on their defense. And in some instances, the 49ers do. Like, them having a good defense kind of does make their offense better. So, uh, see this little group right here. I'm really trying to think about it. Why is the Lions worse than the Rams and the Dolphins? Oh, wide receivers is the is the flaw with them. Where the Dolphins, the Rams, the 49ers, all of them have flaws offensive line wise. So yeah. Yeah. That's the flaw with them. I low key could put the Ravens over all these teams, but I'm not doing that. Um Kansas City Chiefs with Mahomes. Man. I ain't gonna lie, man. If they go three P, I wouldn't be surprised at all. So do not let people say we did the unexpected. I don't give a damn how bad they look in the regular season. Bro. Ride receivers, they got better. No matter how you look at it, Xavier Worthy, Marquise Brown are drop artists. That's just what they, it's just what it is. But at the same time, what did they have last year? MVS, drop artist. Kadarius Tony, drop artist. Justin Watson, ass. Miko Hartman, drop artist. Miko uh Sky Moore, ass. Justin Ross. Didn't even really play enough. But yeah, running backs. Isaiah Pacheco, in my opinion, was the real one consistency on the offense. Travis Kelsey in the regular season was horrible. Patrick Mahomes was not Patrick Mahomes esque in the in the regular season. It just was it what it was. Um, offensive line, in my opinion, I think that was the real bright spark them them and um, Isaiah Pacheco. But the tackles going into the season, I said this, they got two tackles that are very penalty heavy and they could be injury heavy. They lost the tackle I said was horrible, which was very smart. And they actually picked up a tackle in the draft in Kingsley Suamatua, who a lot of people's high on. I wasn't that high on. I'm going to be honest. But, bro, Joe Tooney, Cree Humphrey, Trey Smith, that's one of the best guard center combinations in the league. I, it's not a lot of teams that can have better than that. Jawan Taylor, I'm not that high on, but he's solid. Um, if Kingsley Suamatua can just be as good as Jawan Taylor, they're going to have a pretty solid offensive line. Now, I do think. Being weak on the tackles is a pretty interesting decision or route to go when your quarterback plays the way he plays. But P- Patrick Mahomes has now changed his game into being a quick reader who can get the ball in his hands early. And he's transitioned to being not the guy that really has to go for the deep play when he, even though the scheme can, you know, he is playing with Aaron, Andy Reid at a certain point. But them having deep threats, two of them this year, I do think MVS was a deep threat, but I think Marquise Brown is a more trustworthy deep threat. And I think Marquise Brown, the past couple of years, has kind of evolved into being more than just a deep threat, especially on the Cardinals. So that's interesting. Rasheed Rice, interesting situation he got going on. Will he be able to play? Um, Xavier Worthy alone, I think they're going to be one of the elite offenses. Oh, they have Patrick Mahomes, bro. I don't know what to tell you. I'm going to put them boys right here. And that's going to be my NFL tier list. How many teams we got in the top? Oh, this is the top 10. This is my top 10 offenses. I got Texas being one, Eagles being two, Dolphins being three, Rams being four, Lions being five, 49ers being six, Ravens being seven. I ain't going to lie. I don't have the Cowboys being this low. I don't have the Cowboys being this low at all. I ain't going to lie. I don't have the Cowboys being this low at all. Offensively. But it could happen. I don't know. But yeah, that's going to be the tier list. Y'all do one more. That's a crazy emoji combination. But yeah, like the video. Subscribe if you're new. Brother do match. Your boy fits. I'm out there, man. Tell him to bring me my money. Yeah!